Okay, fingers crossed this all works. Um, yeah, got asked for one more tutorial on Twitter, I think. Um, and this one's on one of the courses I've been doing at the moment. It has been very heavy on barrancas, so kind of planted ravines and what have you. That's this one. Um, so what we're going to look at is how we might have created that. And the same technique goes for cliffs, which I think people, certainly I struggled with this the first couple of times I did it, and wanted to talk through how I might go about doing that. So you may recall this was our tutorial plot that we originally started with, and we've marked out this area where we were going to have a ravine. I've since redone the whole plot and done something different. I thought I can talk through how you'd go about doing cliff edges as well, which we might do around here, um, as well as that barranca. And we'll just get a decent cliff. Uh, we're going to actually are those placed on top of the land? Yeah, we're fine. So in order to get, get a decent cliff, you want a bit of height anyway. With this plot, it was kind of going down to the ocean edge. For the moment, just to kind of do the, this the way I want it, I'm actually just going to raise the whole plot up. Let's say we put it up 100 feet or so. Now you see this kind of gives this horrible look down to the edge, but we're going to be able to create some decent steep cliff edges. As you can see, some of this has already done it already for us. I'm just grabbing some lunch at the same time, so I may just go occasionally quiet once I've explained something whilst I'm eating. Um, first thing to bear in mind is theme. Um, some themes do this better than others. Delta, you can see kind of how the terrain gets jagged and goes into this rough, rocky, sandy texture. Delta's really good for that. You will get cliffs looking a little bit different in different themes. If, for example, I was to change the theme to tropical, you'll notice that that sandy texture becomes a bit more rocky. Something like that. And this I've done before and used on Coma Bay was tropical. And that worked really nicely for those kind of darker cliff edges. And we'll start switching the themes around later. You also see this texture scars a little less easy than Delta. By scarring, I mean goes to this kind of rockyish sort of look, um, rather than just staying green the whole time. Yeah, not many drop frames. I think we're doing OK. Um, if we were to go to, let's see, countryside, for example. Well, the texture scars really well, but you're never going to get rid of the outside layer being what it is. You can't get ocean. So for cliffs, I wouldn't bother with this. For ravines, you could do. Same is true with harvest. Harvest, again, you see you get the really nice deep texture changes, but it's surrounded by land. You're landlocked. Same is true with autumn. Again, will work pretty nicely for ravines. It's a bit greener. Um, the default texture is more kind of brown, as if you've so if you were to bury trees, you can enhance that as well. We'll talk about that a bit later. Um, a really bad one to do this in would be rustic. Now, rustic, if we look at it, the terrain doesn't really do anything. It just stays pretty green the whole time, and even if you get it as sheer as sheer can be, it doesn't really work very well. Um, so I wouldn't really use this theme for what you're doing. Um, but the, and Highlands would be a great choice. Um, tends to get cliffs working really nicely. Same with Step. And obviously Highlands you can get the island. Step you can get the island as well. And Step scars brilliantly. We're going to go back to our Delta though. Because we'd already started it in this. And is it going to keep... Yeah, lighting's at 90, which is never good. And we'll get our lighting down to kind of roughly where we want it to be. So as you can see, these have kind of started working. The key brush you're going to want to do with, with pretty much all of these, we're going to go with a couple. The first one we're going to use is this kind of jaggedy one. You can see that one side here is far thinner. If you see the kind of graded blue, we've talked about this a little bit before, but the fuzzier areas are going to have less of a half, harsh effect. Anything inside where it's just clear is going to be affected 100%. And then down to like 0% round here. So if I did all of this, you can see the middle is being dragged all the way down. 
and the outside's being dragged a little bit less. On this side it's creating a sharper gradient than on this side because there's more fuzziness. You can also see where those shadows start coming in is where it's going to it's going to really scar and really you try to avoid getting any of these kind of lines coming in. As soon as you get that and we click, sometimes it can be good, often it's just too much of a big move. A lot of this is really just feel based. You'll kind of get where you want to be. I'd suggest really is coming up with an idea of where you want your cliff. And let's say we're doing a cliff. We've got a pretty natural edge right about here. Now you can do this in a cup. I'll first do kind of like the beginner way, which is how I've done it on a first few plots, which would be to go like maybe 20 down, relatively big brush. No, oh, no, I was never that bad. And it might look, I don't know, something like this. <laughs> and yeah, that's a cliff edge. It's pretty dramatic, I mean, it's relatively dramatic, but it doesn't look particularly natural. The transition is just a bit too... The problem we've got here is we've made big moves too early. And a lot of this is kind of counterintuitive in terms of we want to make a big cliff, but actually we want to do that by using a relatively small brush. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to take it to maybe, I think four feet is usually where I tend to go. I'm just going to go really gradually and keep moving it each time. Not much, but you might also see there'll be a little kind of prong coming out, which you might want to highlight. So we can take the same brush, maybe even go a bit smaller than this. And we're just going to kind of outline this little shape. I might go on top of it because at the moment it's just too sheer. Maybe make it a little bit shallower than that. Now that formation for me is a little bit more interesting. It's not perfect yet. And every time I do this I tend to muck around with it a bit differently. Another brush I'll use, you really want the ones with quite jaggedy edges. This one's an interesting one. Um, I tend to use this at like two feet maybe at most. Because if you do it much more than that, this one I, th I find often needs softening out somewhere. But it does give you some really good scarring textures. But you can pr it's one of those brushes where you can pretty clearly see when you've used it. So I might use that one. Um, the other one that I've started using is this one, which is a trick I think I saw from Reeb, which is taking this one down quite small, only about a foot or so, and just kind of jabbing away at the land a little. And it makes some nice little indentations. But again, the trick is that we're going relatively smoothly, relatively slowly, and we can still make some big moves. So this bit, I think, is probably too high. It doesn't really make sense that it's going to go high and then down and up. So I can still lower this with the fuzzy brush the same way I normally would do. And I'm just going to kind of keep working away at this for a couple of minutes, and we'll see what comes of it. It's not going to be perfect, but we'll have an idea. varying the size of the brush a little bit, varying the height it's at, but really just slow little moves that are going to make the land a little bit more jagged. Because what we don't want is that sheer drop that you get if you just do this with kind of one big move. And don't be afraid with this, just experiment as you're going. Uh, sometimes you'll see I'm using the 
kind of sharper side, sometimes I'm using the less sharp side. I can't really explain why some of that's happening, more that it's just a bit of instinct. And occasionally I'll use flatten if I kind of want the bottom to maybe look a little bit more natural, or like, like it's sitting down. And as ever, I mean, we haven't really decided how we're doing this as a whole. And I've kind of abandoned this plot really, so let's say we're having a T up here. Oh yeah, I've forgotten, I've done it on auto, non-auto flatten. So with this one, I'd still be going back and looking, well, where's this actually coming into play? Am I going to want you to carry that? That's carryable with like a fast, fast or downwind. Do I want you to be able to carry here? Eh, for me, not. This isn't the type of, I don't really like the type of hole where it's just, I want, if you're cliffside, I kind of want you to be using it, but in a way that's going to make you think, not a, in this sense, if you're able to carry dead over here, well, you're always going to be able to carry it. And yes, it generates angle play, but it's a bit forced. I mean, if you can go to here or to here or to here, hmm, I don't know. So one of the things I might try to do is go, well, could we make it so that there's a bit more of an indentation here that we're working around? So that, well, maybe you can carry it here on some days, but if you try to go really close to the edge and you muck up, well, you're still suffering a bit more. And then it's less of a just play safe down the middle. Same brush. And we're just going to start doing some little moves. It's often worth working out where you want the top of it to be. And I'm trying to think of mistakes I've made in the past. Going too fast at it too quickly is one. And kind of too many big moves really early on. But also try to outline the top of where you want it to be and then give yourself a lot of space to work with because we can always bring this ocean in at any point it's when you're kind of trying to go from here down to here the game doesn't really handle steep cliffs very well or steep jagged land it isn't good you have to go pretty gradually and you're also going to eventually have to mask what you're doing with some planting really um you don't have to but i think it looks better So we're still just going to keep gradually working at this bit of land. As you can see, this bit's gotten very steep very quickly, which is probably OK because it's not really in view. But it might be something we want to sort out. So that could be, well, because it's gotten very steep, do we want to lower the top bit? Or do we want to raise up the bottom a little bit? And a lot of this is just trial and error and going back and amending again and again and again. I would suggest trying not to use flatten, but at times it can be really useful. Uh, and you can advance to edit brushes. I've done this before and done flatten to kind of raise up some of the bottom bits. So I think if we wanted to even this spine bit out a little, a little flatten brush will work quite nicely. And then once we kind of get it close to where we're wanting which i don't think this is miles off it's not the fun thing about kind of doing the cliff stuff is because the brushes and the way you're putting them down are going to be very different each time you can't really plan for it so your holes might eventually end up looking very different anyway um you can try spam clicking so like i might line this up and then just go four clicks and see what happens i don't Personally, I don't really subscribe to that method so much because I like having a bit more control over it. If you are going to do that, I'd suggest you go kind of no less than, no more than two feet, and I'd make the brush pretty small because you're going to want, however you're spam clicking, you're going to want those moves to be pretty narrow. I find the problem is you can see that I'm not spinning the brush. You can do it with spinning the brush, but then you lose all control. Let's try that. I mean, it's not bad. I don't know. There's a, I'm sure there's a method to be found. I just don't feel as much comfort in doing that way. Um, just, this has tended to be how I've done it before. 
And honestly, just never feel afraid to at any point go, this isn't looking how I want it and save. Oh, sorry, exit without saving. Let's maybe switch back to this one. And you'll see that this one scars the terrain really nicely. Kind of getting that bold edge. Um, so yeah, and then let's say we were going to bring the water in. Well, suddenly this is looking a lot better just by hiding some of the bits underneath. And I would suggest these little bits, these bits that aren't quite there, use them. Don't have it just going dead down to a lake. Have little bits where, you know what, the land is coming up again and meeting some of this and plant it with rocks or what have you. Um, it can work really nicely. Have a little bay where you've got some bits of it planted. Right, I think that looks, for me, that looks really good. So the next bit I would suggest you do is then planting it. Now, I've used a couple of trees in the past. I find this one looks really good for like, in Delta, this kind of leafy tree look is great. And that tree sinks really nicely. Now that would be one if you wanted something that's overgrown, but still quite, I don't know, excuse me, quite fresh. Um, somewhere where no, there's a lot of planting going on there's a lot of water it's quite verdant um i found this one works really nicely if you're doing i don't know and something that's got maybe less planting less water more sparse kind of i don't know a little bit more barren what i'd suggest you do with this is just burying this down and try to plant a few of the little crevasses that have come up You'll notice as well that this has the risk of browning out the terrain because we know with buried trees it's going to make the, the I mean the logic is understandable if you plant a tree in the ground let's say above ground well it's going to take some water from the soil so the land you see underneath it goes a little bit brown plant another one it's going to go browner browner etc now what and it can go to that kind of stony texture you saw at the end what is also true in this game is if you were to put that entire tree underground it still thinks the tree is buried there so it's going to brown out the terrain in exactly the same way and we can use that to make ground look even more stony so now i would recommend though that you do the planting first because what you're getting is then dual purpose you're getting trees that are acting as planting but they're also browning out the terrain for us as well I tend to use this sometimes to hide areas where I just couldn't quite sculpt it perfectly. So this bit is a bit steep. So maybe we'll bury a few bits here. So sometimes it's hiding bits. Sometimes it's just where there happen to be little kind of nooks or crannies or whatever. Sometimes it's just where I think it looks good. I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of up to you. Um, I'd suggest sticking to trees rather than bushes. Personally, I'd find bushes, particularly in Delta, these ones look really fake to me. And it just all looks very video gamey. I found this tree in particular, I use this a lot on white pepper, is great when you because you can sink it down really small. And you can pop that in. Get a few things. Again, those little islands I'd probably plant. And we're not doing a very thorough job of this, but we might switch to another tree again, another small one, maybe because they make pretty good bushes I find something along those lines and don't do vary up some of the colors of bushes you don't want well, maybe you do want maybe you do want the same kind of texture the same exact color everywhere I find it's quite nice to give a little bit of variety where you can and so if we've done something like that we'll end up with a little bit of a cliff edge that we can work off Now in terms of the next bit, well, you might chuck in a couple of rocks as well. Some people like this. I find this is something that a lot of beginners will do and it's actually really hard to get right. 
because those rocks are a slightly different colour to this texture. So it's all well and good bunging some rocks in, but how are we making them blend with the terrain? There's no really good answer to this. You can, I think the best bit of advice I've been given is just make them giant, because that stretches the rock texture a little bit more and bury them really deep. Covers up more, it looks, I don't know. Personally, I'd rather always, if I possibly can, I will try to use the base terrain more. Um, now, with this, if we were to change the theme again, I'm going to have to hit undo after I do this, I think. Um, the problem we're going to have now is because I've planted it, we're going to see all the planting change. So if we go to tropical, hopefully the game hasn't frozen. No, no, it hasn't. And as you can see, it's replaced them all with plants and palms. So you can tell exactly which bush it is that it's changed this for, because in the game, the way it is, it's just coded this as item one, item two, item three. So sometimes it will stay the same, where this one, exactly the same item in Delta as it is in Tropical, so this one stayed the same. The tree that we used down here, not so much. But you can see that this has got a slightly different texture. We've got that more, and that's going to change as well when you use the heavy rough texture. So heavy rough te texture will change the base terrain as well. So we can play with that a little bit more. Get it to a colour you might want. Maybe even that one. No, probably not. I think the message with all of this is just go and play with stuff and see what happens. Um, in terms of ravines, this, the principle is exactly the same. What I'm going to do now is just skip out the last little bit would be to show you kind of a finished product because it does take a while. Um, do I have it unpublished or am I going to have to leap into playing around? Okay, so this is first of all the one I'm working on currently, which is where the ravine kind of eventually came up to. Um, I built an entire plot where I built the whole ravine first and then we've rooted around it. Um, this one's in Delta, so exactly the same, and it's not finalised yet. I may do some small tweaking, um, but you can see roughly how you might plant it and have it looking. This one's meant to be really overgrown, um, and you've got a couple of holes that are sitting alongside it, so seven's going to be a nice little par three that comes down. Um, one kind of plays over it. Two plays along to it with it behind, higher jack, um, four you're going to be hitting straight down at it and then kind of over. The idea was that I wanted something that was planted all first of all and then made the plot and the rooting around it. So this was done with no holes in mind, I've just gone and found the holes afterwards. And um, Petty's done the same with one. Um, if you haven't played the Pastimes Club, definitely do, it's a great course. In terms of the kind of cliff edges, uh, so... This would be, I think this is the best I've done it. I can show you a couple of versions where it was not so well done. Um, so I believe this one I did pretty early on and can sh hopefully show you some of the progress that I've made with this. So it's actually in Delta which means we're looking at exactly the same thing we just practiced with. Oh, computer's struggling to keep up with it. Um, I'm really proud of this course. I think this was my third course? No, second. Well, third course in total. Um, but there is definitely one area this bit. Um, now this, looking back on it, at the time I thought this looked quite good. Um, as we always do when we're designing. The problem here, as you can see, is I've gone too steep too quickly. I need to give it more space, a bit more time, smaller brushes, and that's kind of where I would expect to see beginners with cliff edge um, sculpting. It's just really difficult. You have to go way more gradual than you think. Same around here, hasn't really aged very well. This bit's a bit better. It's not perfect. I'd still have, like, I don't know, this bit coming out a little bit more. But this bit's not dreadful, but you can still see around here, like the transition is the water's not particularly clean, there's no... Oh, I've left a little bit of land there as well. I don't know. 
this is a great course though i'm still one of my very favorites i've ever designed because it was the course where i got into kind of doing strategy properly um and this holds one of my favorites i've ever built just lovely um so we got this one. Oh, Petty's joined in. Hi. Um, and then we'll go show the final one, which is a little bit... Oh, the computer is really chugging. And then kind of getting a little bit better from that would have been Kayuma, where I think that's kind of cliff sculpting as I'd want it to be done. Oh, it's all the way down here. Yeah, so this one's in Tropical. Works out pretty nicely. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, Jack, I didn't see that. Yeah, all well, thank you. Um, as well as we can be in lockdown. I'm going to get to actually doing some design after this, but I wanted to record this one tutorial, having got a question on it. Um, now, now that this contest is over and I can comment totally on this course, um, I hate this cliff edge. It was a pain to sort, and it didn't look very good. But the ones down the side, I'm really happy with. So like this bit, it's quite nice. I could have done more with this, but it was never in view. Uh, the one round by four. Again, I think this could be tapered into the uh, into the seam maybe a little bit more at the bottom, but it got really tricky. It was so tough to do because the planting kept making these black spots, and sometimes there's just no way to avoid it. But I think that tee shot's one of the better ones I've ever done. Um, and it used the land really nicely. You had to bounce a driver on here to land, get it onto the green. As you can see, it's kind of planted right up to the top. It's pretty overgrown. It looks, I feel, pretty natural. Um, and then you've got the same with these little islands down here. They're still planted. I think these bits definitely needed to be a bit more natural. These bits are just kind of sticking up out of the ocean, and I didn't really ever question them when I came back to it. This bit of cliff, horrible. Don't trust that. But it was never in sight, so I didn't really mind. Um, this bit, lovely. Really happy with how this one came out and really how this whole course came out. And this is kind of how I wanted to do a bit more of it. Again, lots of small clicks with small brushes is the way to go. It's quite jaggedy, so you have to plant to hide some of that. I still think I could have done it a bit better. And you can see the rocks and things. How do you determine which rock faces are fertile enough for plant growth? You don't. You just go with the bits that kind of need planting to cover it up um, and plant the little gullies, really. But I quite liked having kind of the green texture sticking out a little bit more. And so, I don't know, just playing a bit with that. Um, this cliff edge was, I think, yeah, there are bits of it I don't love. But we're getting into really nitpicky territory here when you start doing that. I was a couple of people commented that they didn't love these little bits. Actually, having been to Halong Bay in real life, I quite liked those little bits, tiny islands kind of coming out. Um, but yeah, I mean, in answer to your question, every everywhere on this course was fertile enough for plant growth. There was a lot of planting um, all the way around. So I think that's it on like ravines and how you get them and the same with those. Really, it just comes down to command of sculpting tools, whether you're good with the kind of harsher ones or then the subtler ones as well. So I'm going to end that stream there and I'll be back in a second and just get on with some more of the um, Pastiempo block.